Hey everybody, uh, today I thought it would be cool to do a video on outdoor condensations and outdoor condensations are pretty cool because you can get a whole lot of interesting products formed. And the general um, formula for an outdoor condensation is you have some kind of, let's say, an aldehyde and you have some sort of ketone We'll make that R prime. And you react it with a base, like NaOH. Actually, I've done this in the lab before, and you, you do use NaOH, usually. And you get a product with a double bond right next to a carbonyl group. And this is important because it's something you call conjugation, where you have these bonds right next to each other these double bonds and if this was say like a benzene ring right there or something you'd have even more conjugation so they do make some interesting products and you do make a new carbon carbon bond so let's go through an example of the mechanism um, I want to do benzaldehyde and acetophenone And this is actually benzaldehyde here that I'm drawing. Just to keep these apart, let's put something else on it, like a nitro group. Okay. Um, and then right here, this is a CH3 group. And what starts this whole thing off is you have a hydroxyl group, that base, it's going to come and pull off one of these hydrogens. Actually, it's going to grab that, and then you're going to get a negative charge up here. So you have your negative charge going on on that carbon, and that is going to want to go and attack something fairly electrophilic like this one right here. And of course those are going to jump up there because you can't have five bonds on a carbon. And pretty soon, oh, let's not forget that. Pretty soon you've got a big product and we just formed a new carbon-carbon bond. And a good thing to do right now is to start counting these so there's one, here's two, here's three, and remember that still has the carbonyl on it. Now remember this whole time we're going to have one, two, and three. Okay? Alright. Now we have a negative charge up here. What's going to happen is you're going to have some water Remember up here we just formed water that pulled off and that gave us plus H2O. So the whole time in an aldol reaction you're going back and forth between water and hydroxide. So now we're going to form a hydroxide and Okay, there's three, two, one. So now we have a hydroxyl group up there. And if you remember what we started with, we had an acidic proton right next to our carbonyl group. And we have two here actually. So it makes another great spot for our base to come in and pull off a proton and give us another negative charge to work with. And I guess I didn't explicitly say this before, but the reason why this works is just that these protons are pretty acidic just because of the way that carbonyl is next to it. And that just means they're easy to deprotonate with a base. So anytime anybody talks about an acidic proton or it's more acidic than this proton or they actually give you PKAs for various protons in a molecule, just the 
more acidic it is, the easier it is to get deprotonated. So now we've got this molecule right here. Got a negative charge on that middle one. Remember there's one, two, three. Just to keep track of which one we were, remember that was the aldehyde and this was the ketone. The way this is drawn is usually they show this charge come up here and going up here so that you end up with a negative charge and then oxygen. You've got a double bond here. That's oh, not very good drawing. And an OH over there. And what happens is this kind of whips down here, that goes up there, and then you actually have the hydroxide as a leaving group. And this only works in this case because you've got acidic conditions going on. Or basic conditions, I'm sorry. So you end up with a double bond right next to there. And there is our hydroxide that we started with. So you see there's one, two, three. You always have those three you're working with the whole time in your aldol reaction. So you can see, in this case, um, there were not a lot of possible products because what we started with were things with phenyl groups on them. And this, for instance, you can't deprotonate there. There's no, there's no proton to deprotonate. Same thing with this one. You've got a CH3 group here. There's only one spot to deprotonate. Now what you can have in this reaction is you could have the acetophenone reacting with itself. And here's our already deprotonated other acetophenone. That would just come up there, grab onto there. That could happen. Now, I'm not going to work this out, but, um, well, I'm not going to work it out for you. I already worked it out. The product that you get looks something like this. And those are the only two products you can get from that reaction. However, if you started with something a little bit more open-ended, like these two for instance, you can get a lot more stuff going on. So for example, if the ketone reacted with the aldehyde, you would get a product like this. And if the aldehyde reacted with itself, you could get a product like this. And if the ketone reacted with the ketone, you could get something looking like this.